Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to show you how you can start generating your own AI images using Stable Diffusion, which runs locally on your own machine. So you can run it at will, however often you want without any limitations. And if you don't know what Stable Diffusion is, you may have been living under a rock. Stable Diffusion is one of the currently most popular text to image AI based models that you can use to generate AI images. Whether you call it AI art or not is a whole nother discussion, maybe a topic of another video that I'll be making. But you can generate some really, really amazing photorealistic or artistic or you know, just creative images for all sorts of things using Stable Diffusion. I've been using it for a lot of my own wallpapers that I've generated just, you know, just because I wanted something nice on my desktop that I couldn't just get online. Uh, so here's one for Japan. You know, can also generate, you know, images of cats, of cityscapes, of people, of, you know, monsters, because I like grimy and horror. So I've done a whole bunch of that sort of stuff with Stable Diffusion. The other thing I've used Stable Diffusion for a lot as well is to generate some concept images for a video game I've been trying to create. So there's a whole bunch of images generated via Stable Diffusion. It has a lot of really powerful features. You can you know, use input images to generate images that are like the images that you feed into it. It now supports text to video as well as video to video and a whole bunch of other advanced features. But in this video, I just wanna go over the absolute basics of how do you get started, set up, install Stable Diffusion and how do you start running and generating your own images on your own computer. So I want to run through all of that in this particular video. Timestamps and everything, so you can jump to what you might find relevant or interesting, will be down in the video description. YouTube also adds the chapter. So you can just jump to wherever you want to and any questions you might have, comments, feedback, leave that down in the comment section. I'm pretty proactive reading everything and try to answer as much as I can. So just utilize that as much as you want to. Now, in order to run Stable Diffusion, you do need a couple of things. The first thing you need to do is you need to download Python. Python is a programming language and Stable Diffusion runs on Python. So any machine that you can install Python on, be that Windows, Mac, Linux, you can run Stable Diffusion on. So if you jump over to python.org forward slash downloads, and I'll drop all of the links down in the video description as well, as well as a little you know step-by-step -step instruction of what you need to do to get up and running as well. Just jump to python.org downloads, and then just simply click download Python 3.12.1 or whatever the latest version of that might be. And then just save that out to your local computer. And then all you have to do is run that installer. Do make sure that you add Python to the path because you'll need to execute it from the command line. But again, via scripts, and I'll show you how to do that later. It's not difficult. It just, it sounds scary. First, just install Python onto your machine. Then that is done. The next thing you need to do is you need to download a stable diffusion model, which is essentially the AI built model that contains all of the knowledge of how to generate the images. Now there's a bit of misconception that these models contain copies of images that they found online, which isn't really the case. It's more like, imagine a AI robot looking at every single image within a very big image database and remembering what's the shape of a cat, what's the general shape of a human or a house or a tree. And so that when you ask the AI to generate me a tree, it just has, the knowledge of how generally to shape up a tree based on all the images it's seen. It's kind of like drawing from memory. Now, that is not to say that there isn't, you know, legal issues and copyright questions and a whole bunch of things that people are still trying to figure out and a lot of controversy around that. And again, might be the topic for another video if you guys are interested. But you can get these stable diffusion models for free online. And the easiest place to get them is just come to Stability AI, which is the company that makes and releases Stable Diffusion. And by the way, Stable Diffusion is open source. So the source code for Stable Diffusion is freely available online. You can look at it, you can download it, you can modify it. It's all free in that way. And so are the models that Stability AI releases. So come to stability.ai and then you can come down and you can look at the different models. And all of these AI models excel at something specific. The latest one is SDXL Turbo, which is a really fast version of the stable diffusion model, but it you know works slightly different to what you'll find mostly online. So the one I want to go with for this video at least is Stable Diffusion XL. And you can see some of the example images that have been generated using this model and it's it's just mind blowing what you can do with this. So let's close this out and down here. Now you can generate images online without running anything on your computer, but you will have to pay for that privilege on a pro plan for Stability AI. We actually just want to download the model and run everything locally on our machine. So let's click on download code and this will open up a GitHub repository, which is essentially a, a place where developers can place code and you know technical stuff. Don't worry too much about it. Let's just scrub 
all the way down, skip over all of the news and all of the other bits and pieces. What you're looking for are these links to SDXL Base 1.0. There's also a refiner, which is kind of like a second pass over your image to improve some of the details and hands and feet and enhance the image. We're not going to worry about that, at least not for this particular video. So simply click into this SDXL Base 1.0. And again, don't worry, I'll, I'll put all of the download links down below the video. And then you're going to come to huggingface.co, which is a site that houses a lot of the stable diffusion and AI text to image or text to video models and information. Um, and in here, this is the one for Stability AI and Stable Diffusion XL, the base model 1.0. Again, just ignore all of the technical stuff, but it is actually really interesting. If you wanna know how these models work, and again, I can make a separate video on that, read through some of the tech specs. It's actually really exciting, I think, on how these models actually work. Or if none of that is of interest to you, you just wanna generate some images, just come into files and versions up here at the top. Come down a little bit. And the one you want to download is SDXL Base 1.0 VAE, which stands for Variable Auto Encoder. Again, just the part that comes improves the image as it comes out, but that's all baked into this one model here. And I'll just click on this download file link at the base. Then let's download this file. Now it's pretty massive. Some of these models are you know, many gigabytes. This one is six gigabytes. I'm going to let that download in the background while we get set up with the rest of the stuff. Now we've installed Python, which is the runtime that's going to run Stable Diffusion. And we are downloading the model that Stable Diffusion will use to generate our images. We do need Stable Diffusion itself, however. And the way to get that, simply come into Google and search for Stable Diffusion UI. And again, another GitHub code repository called Stable Diffusion Web UI. And again, links down in the video description. And this is the actual code, the actual executable code that runs Stable Diffusion with a nice little web-based interface that you can then enter your text in and run your prompts and you know look at your images and everything like that. So up here, if you have Git installed, if you know what that means, you can just download the GitHub repo, you can just clone it to your local machine. If you don't know what Git is, you don't really care, up here where it says code, just click on this little drop down here, and we're just going to say download zip. So we can bypass all of the Devi things and just download the whole thing. It's going to download Stable Diffusion Web UI Master Zip to our local machine, so let's do that. Back in the folder where you downloaded everything. So there's our stable diffusion web UI master zip file. Let's unpack all of that here. Why not into stable diffusion web UI master? So let's jump into this particular folder. Okay, it has a subfolder, it doesn't really matter too much. And in here is stable diffusion. Everything that you need to run it, as well as add the models that you want to use to generate your images or tools for modifying images or training your own models, everything sits in here. And again, if you're a dev or an engineer, there's some fascinating stuff in here worth looking through and understanding how it all hangs together. If you're not, the easiest thing you need to do is you need to execute web user UI batch file if you're on Windows or web user UI shell file if you're on Mac or Linux. So I'm on Windows, so I'm just going to double click this web UI user batch file. And that is going to now kick off and execute Python and install all of the dependency, all of the packages and all the other bits and pieces that I need to run Stable Diffusion locally. Now this might take a while because it's going to download quite a lot of data, run through a lot of different tools and get everything set up. And then it's going to launch the web UI that we're getting, which will then allow us to enter our prompts and run images as well as use our different models to generate the images. So I'm going to let this run you may see me just hop out a little bit while this runs, because again, this, this can take a little bit, so I'm just going to tinker while this runs. Okay, here we are, and don't worry, this only happens the very first time you launch Stable Diffusion. From here on, it usually starts up within 10 to 20 seconds, so it's just the first time that this is really slow. So now Stable Diffusion has installed all the dependency and it has launched the web UI, which is where you can do everything with Stable Diffusion that you may want to do. Now, the first thing you need to do if you want to generate any images with Stable Diffusion is you need to select a Stable Diffusion checkpoint. By default, if you click on this drop down here, there's V1.5 pruned, email only safe tensor. It's like a dummy model, but it's enough to test whether this whole thing is even working. So let's simply in this prompt field here, write uh, cute sleeping cat, Outdoors, quaint, porch, evening, light. And then let's hit generate over on the right hand side and see what happens. And sure enough, it looks like a cat sleeping outside on the porch. So this seems to be working. However, the default model isn't terribly great. So let's come back to our download folder. And yes, the SDXL base 1.0 Save tensors file has downloaded and it's 6.7 gigabytes, so that took a little bit. So let's 
cut this out and we need to move this into the Stable Diffusion Web UI Master folder and it goes under Models and in here you'll find Stable Diffusion. So double click into that and paste or move your model into that. Let's come back to the Web UI. Hit refresh on those checkpoints. And now in this drop down, you should have SDXL base 1.0.9 VAE. Let's click on this and load it up. It's just going to take a little while while this model is being loaded. And if you pull up the console where you've launched the Web UI, you can see what's happening down here. It's now loaded this model. Let's come back to Stable Diffusion Web UI and hit generate again to regenerate that image using a different model. And yeah, that is still a cat on the porch outside at evening light. Now with Stable Diffusion XL, you should really be changing your resolution. So right now the resolution of our output is set to 512 by 512, which used to be the resolution at which some of the earlier models for Stable Diffusion were trained. So they were trained on images at this resolution, which meant the outputs were best using that resolution. Stable Diffusion XL, however, and some of the newer models use higher resolution. So I highly recommend change your width to 768 by 768. Obviously that's going to take longer to generate depending on your graphics card and Stable Diffusion does require a fairly decent graphics card. I would recommend at least four gigabytes of VRAM. The NVIDIA RTX cards work really, really well for this. So let's hit generate and regenerate that image. And yeah, it's still a cat on a porch outside. Don't like that it's kind of cartoony looking. So let's refine our prompt just a little bit. Let's add photo and realistic into our prompt and let's regenerate our image. And that looks pretty cool. You can click on this image to zoom in and you can see the AI-ness and the fact that it's generated and the fact that this cat seems to be missing a leg. This is just some of those things that you'll have to encounter and you'll have to fix them manually either with in-painting or with some other trickery to kind of get them to look just right. But let's just come back. Let's just maybe just generate one more so you can see that every single time I get a new image generated that matches my prompt. And there is a lot to how you do the prompting, both the positive as well as the negative prompt. Some of these parameters, they all influence that final image, but that's beyond the scope of this video. And from this point, just play around and just have some fun and see what you can get. There's some amazing stuff you can do. And I'll cover all of these parameters and how to prompt properly, as well as some more advanced prompts and other stuff with Stable Diffusion in later videos. And again, if you have questions, you wanna see something specific or you're just getting stuck somewhere, just drop me those comments down below and I'll get back to you. I'm just, I'm really excited. I really like Stable Diffusion and some of these other cool tools that are coming out everywhere with AI, everything, um, even though there are, you know, question around copyright, impact of AI on the workforce and how everything is shifting. You know, there's a lot to unpack. Don't wanna to get too much into it, but it is a really cool tool to play with and I've used it for tons of my own personal stuff and just have fun with and play around. But with that, I'm going to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, subscribe to this channel if you want to support me. It really helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. And with that, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.